Arbogen provides genetic tree stocks to customers in New Zealand and Australia. The trees are bred through open and controlled pollination in nurseries or orchards throughout the country. Among the challenges is being able to provide the planting stock that customers need to continuously improve their forests. Uh, each customer has their own needs, depending on their forest site, depending on their silviculture, the forest regime that they're growing, and what their end products are. This orchard produces all the controlled pollinated seed for our company. So we are self-sufficient as far as possible in controlled pollinated seed and that enables us to then work with our customers and be able to stock the orchard with the appearance that best meets their needs. Um, and we're able to collect the pollen from those orchards that also meet their needs. Uh, in addition, the orchard provides the base for our varietal program, which is effectively selecting the best of the best. We're only about a kilometre from the sea here, and so it's a good flowering site, which is critical, and it's also close to a source of irrigation from the Awateri River. And again, irrigation is important to be able to grow good seed. Control pollination is about isolating the flower that's on the tree so no external pollen can get to that flower while it's receptive. A flower is only receptive for a short period of time during July and August. And so we put a bag over the flower, isolate the flower so no pollen can reach to it, and then we're able to introduce pollens that we require. So that means for a controlled pollinated tree that we know both the mother and the father. There's an ongoing breeding program in New Zealand. There are new genetics coming through all the time. And so for genetic improvement, there are five traits or characteristics of the tree that are bred for, and they are growth, straightness, branching habit, uh, dothostroma resistance and for wood density. And there are uh, breeding efforts going on and trials in the forest and from those trials new parents are coming out all the time. And so as those parents are then introduced into the seed orchard and then we have to remove the lower ranked ones and, and replace them with the better genetics. We also are now introducing our varietals into the seed orchard, so these are Arbogen varietals and they are bringing in the next level of tree improvement into our seedling stock in the future. All these trees have been tested in the forest so we know how well they grow in terms of straightness and other wood properties. So we're not worried about what these trees look like. All we want them to do is to produce as many pine cones and as many seeds as possible. This site here is 14 hectares and we have 20,000 trees. When fully stocked, we have 20,000 trees on site here. We're constantly changing upgrading the genetics, depending on what Arbogen want us to do. So at any one stage, there will be trees which we're not pollinating because their genetics has been improved. And we'll go through and, and mulch them, remove them, and then replant them the following year. The trees that we're growing here are grafted rootstock. And the material on top is quite old physiologically, and the rootstock is young, which gives them the vigor to grow. It means that the trees will start producing flowers within two to three years after we've planted them. These cones here were pollinated in July last year, so these are about six to seven months old, and these will be harvested at the end of 2017. And on the same tree, we've got the crop here, which was pollinated in 2014, and we'll be harvesting these in December of this year, 2016. What we're doing here in terms of pruning is we're trying to keep the tree as low as possible so we can do everything from the ground. You'll see on here, this is last July's pollination up the top here, and this is the year before's. So the first thing we do is we, we make sure we've cleared around those so we don't accidentally cut them off. And then what we're looking to do is create as many fingers coming up or potential growing tips for flowering in July of this year. So it's the complete opposite of, of forestry, if you like, where you want one straight stem. We want as many stems as we can, coming at a height that we can work at. Every tree in the orchard is irrigated, so it's more akin to a, an orchard as opposed to a forest. We also do foliage sampling every year to identify nutrient status and apply fertiliser accordingly. And with our irrigation, we, monitor, we have soil moisture probes which we monitor the, the soil moisture status and, and adjust the irrigation accordingly. So we can, we can fine tune things and, and make sure that the trees are as healthy and as vigorous as possible because we are giving them a bit of a hard time with the pruning that we do.
We harvest the cones by Christmas and we bring them into the shed and we stick them into crates, making sure that we've picked them so that the genetic integrity is still intact, we know where it's come from. And then we leave them in the shed to air dry and then April, May we start cone processing where we'll put them into a kiln and dehumidify them for a few days until their moisture content is down to a level we can crack them and then we put the cones into a kiln and crack them at, at a fairly high temperature for about eight hours and they crack open. So that's the unopened harvested cone. And once they've been through the cracking process, the, the tines open up and you end up with the seeds in there. Obviously we can't do that with every cone, so we have a machine that we put them through, like a, a concrete mixer where they go in. It spins them and it has slots at the bottom, the seeds fall out, the cones travel on through into a bin and are disposed of, and then the seed goes through a cleaning process. The first stage is to remove the wings. Each seed has a, a wing which in nature helps it fly and disperse. So we use a concrete mixer type machine with a little bit of water dampness which the wing sticks to and the seed comes away. So that's the first process is to separate them. We then take it to a sizing machine which will sort the seed by size and also remove any twigs or branches or anything left in it. And then finally we ended up with seed but we have a problem with dead seed and live seed. So we have an air blowing machine which sorts the seed based on its weight. And the final product is that we end up with seed like this, which is basically our finished product. We bucket it up and send it away to Abergin's Titeco headquarters. And then it's sent out to the nurseries where it's sown in the nursery. And 12 months later, you have the, the wee seedlings which go into the forest. So one, one kilogram of seed that we produce from here would produce anywhere from 20 to 30,000 seeds, which is enough to plant 20 to 30 hectares of forest out on the hillside. So you can see the crops doing really well here. These, oh, yeah, these are good, looking really healthy. Yeah. Forestry is ticking along at the moment. And I think the future is really in focusing on genetic improvement so that the product that does come out of the forest has a wider range of applications. And because we're looking on a 30 year time frame then the investment that's being made now in genetics won't be seen for 30 years, but if you don't invest in that, uh, those genetics now, then um, in 30 years' time, you may have difficulty selling your log products or, or whatever, so it's quite, quite important. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.